Hey, John here from John's Do It Yourself. I just received the Atom Stack A5 M50 in the mail, unopened. We're gonna jump right into what this thing can do. If you wanna see an unboxing and how to put it together, wait till the end of this video. I wanna see what this thing can do, so let's get cutting. Okay, before we threw an image on this machine to burn, I set up the basic test pattern. This would allow me to get a sense of what my settings should be, so I could jump right in and start burning. Okay, so the quality of the burn looks good. This is an inch and a half image, and I can clearly see the numbers surrounding the image in pristine detail, so we're off to a good start. My kid loves Luffy, so I thought I would take his favorite character and burn him on a small piece of birch. This was a colored anime picture that was converted to black and white during import. So with so many shades being so close in similarity, this will give me a feel of what a 5 watt laser is capable of. This rendition of Luffy took 53 minutes. With Luffy ready to be cut out, I needed to find out what speed and power was needed for the perfect cut. So I grabbed a test piece, the same thickness as the Luffy image, and began with a 1 inch circle. My first cut was 1 inch a minute at 100% power. And as you can see, first contact put a nice scorch mark on the surface. Yeah, that was a bit too much. My next cut was at 5 inches a minute, so I slowed it down a bit, but I left it at 100% power. This looks fantastic, and without air assist, I was impressed that there were no scorch marks. So now thinking of time and larger cuts, what was the max I could go and still make it through? So I set my laser at 10 inches a minute at 100%. This cut my cut time in half, but I fear with some plywoods, that glue would still be a problem, so I intend to stay at 5100 for other cuts. Next, I decided to change over to millimeters and see if I could cut anywhere close to the claimed 15 millimeters like on the website. This is a claim of 20 passes though. And remember, at a 2 millimeter focus, you cannot do a step down as you cut. But after 20 passes, I only managed to get through 4 millimeters of the plywood. So with that knowledge, I used my 5100 setting and began to cut Luffy out. So far, overall impressed with the results of this little project. So at this point, I thought I would go larger and cut out a detailed star that was about 8 inches big. This project was so time consuming that my camera battery died, but it got the job done. Next, I was going to engrave some metal. I chose a dog tag to place a picture of a kneeling soldier at a cross with the US flag behind him. I decided to use Ceramark in this test because this stuff is expensive and the dog tag was small, but I'm sure you could get away with the same results from dry molly lube. I thought, so instead of silver, what about gold, or in this case, brass? So I ran the same test on a plaque award nameplate. This time I used dry molly lube, so it's not Ceramark, but the results were quite the same. My next test was on plated metal. I wanted to know what type of detail I could expect, so I decided to burn in the Mayan calendar, or maybe it's the Inca, who knows? Let me know in the comments below. I make this up as I go along, so I could be totally off here. But the results of the detail burn were astonishing. I was using a magnifying glass to see some of the detail in this plated metal. This lends itself to the construction of the frame and the quality of the track motors. Next, I pulled out a small piece of leather. Now this is the same type of leather used on keychains, hat logos, and wallets. So you're gonna get the same results no matter what the object. But the results here were fantastic. For the next burn, I went back to the plated metal and used a design that I had made for a musician. This was both an image and a fill burn. The skeleton had great detail and the letters looked smooth without horizontal lines. Overall, this came out fantastic. I have never burned cork before, so this was going to be new to me. I grabbed a pick of a TIE fighter and then thought, no way, I'm a rebel all the way. So I changed it up and went with an X-Wing fighter. No one's going to accuse me of working for the Empire. Burning cork is easy and it's one of the fastest projects I completed today. Starting to get ideas for some future coasters at this point. The final product looked amazing. 
It was at this point I was running out of ideas to burn, so I went online and saw someone burn logos into denim jeans. I asked my wife to go grab a pair of old jeans I could experiment on. Being from Hampton Roads, the mermaid is the logo of the community. A bit girlish, but this would be great for her jeans. She liked it so much she brought down one of her favorite pairs of jeans and asked me to redo it on that pair. So her actions speak for the quality of the results. Okay, I didn't have the time to make multiple cuts for a wooden version of this, so I thought I would replicate what I had in my head for one of those layered images that everyone makes. And this is also a selling point for using this laser to assist with your kids' projects that are made for poster board. But wood or poster board, I believe the results would be the same. This came out better than I thought, and with the poster board, took less than 20 minutes from download to gluing. Okay, this is outside the scope of testing and a rotary does not come with this product, but I know I will get asked the question because I've been asked when using other lasers. Is the Xtool RA2 rotary compatible with the Atomstack? First, let me say that the Atomstack has its own rotary now, but the answer is yes, the RA2 is a plug and play. The extra adapter that comes in the box plugs nicely into the Atomstack and works great. You will only need to find a way to lift the frame before you begin. I used my test cup, which is powder coated, not plated, and I did manage to make some amazing logos on wine corks with this. But I don't need this video to be any longer than it is, so let's move on. Hey, before we go to the installation, which is pretty easy, let's talk about a few things. Let's start with the, I try to be as unbiased as possible when I do reviews. Okay, so. Yes, you have to remember that I own a 24, a 14, and a 10 watt laser. So I have a comparison model from my experiences. So let's start with the pros of this machine. This is a great beginner's laser, very inexpensive. It gives you a chance to get your feet wet and show you how much artistic ability you need to have and not just the laser making you look good. And lasers have a tendency to make you look good because they do all the work for you. Now, I love the flame retardant face shield that doubles as your eye protection. This is great for me because I'm always looking at the laser and never have my goggles on, which I know I'd lose my eyesight eventually. And this thing is solid and easy to put together. And it gives you that uh, vibe of stableness. Also, I use Lightburn, but it's compatible with a lot of different software. Where it gets my A plus is with the image reproduction. I was blown away with the quality of the simple image of Luffy. The shades this thing produces on simple wood, astonishing. And I can't go on enough about how impressed I was that a five watt laser could produce such shade detail. Speaking of detail, construction of this laser makes it perfect for that fine hair like detail and the production of the Mayan calendar you saw, spot on. You have to squint your eyes to see all the fine lines in the piece. Another great thing is the price. If you are a hobbyist and just want a laser to do those little projects and hobbies, this laser is ideal because it will not hurt your pocketbook. And it is easy all around from installation to using. Okay, now for the cons. There are installation instructions, but no operating instructions. Installation is very simple and can be figured out without the manual, which is very hard to decipher anyway. There is no parameter list for burn settings in for the A5M50 anywhere on the website. If you are new to cutting, this means a lot more trial and error. With a parameter sheet, at least you start in the ballpark. Another thing, when focusing the laser, I was not clear on what I should be using as the focus piece. Nothing is labeled as the focus block. I searched online and found out the specs are two millimeters from the surface of the object. Nothing provided in the box was two millimeters, except a piece of birch wood, which uh, I continued to use with great results. I have major issues with calling the, this a 40 watt laser. I understand that the input is 40 watts and the laser output is five, but to a beginner, this could be deceiving. The length of time for cutting or burning large objects or designs keeps this laser squarely in the hobbyist field. Time is money, and so you're not going to be mass producing anything with this laser. Website claims of 14 millimeter cuts on hardwood, well, I'll refrain from comment, but the best I could achieve was four millimeters after 20 passes, and I'm willing to take the blame on this failure, but remember, I'm not new to lasers. 
So overall, a laser definitely designed with a hobbyist in mind. So let's go get into putting this thing together. Okay, so even out of the box, you should be able to have this laser put together and burning in less than 20 minutes. It's mostly large parts and everything fits together nicely. And at first glance, I'm very impressed with the packaging. They did not skimp on packaging at all. And they definitely ensured that the laser and components were nicely put together and secure for shipping. After I laid everything out, I opened the bag of components and smaller parts. This bag contains all the basic tools you will need to install this laser. You will need a small flathead screwdriver and scissors later, but we will get to that. Also, in this bag are a few samples of 2mm pieces of birch, some small black acrylic pieces, and one clear acrylic piece. All the screws and caps, the rubber tracks, along with the tools, and a few zip ties are also in the bag. Start with your basic frame. It is very important to place the pieces in this order. Start with the piece with the Atom Stack title and lay it furthest from you with the words facing up so you can read the title from where you are standing. For the two side pieces, one has a stop limiter underneath it on the bottom side. This piece goes to your left and the stop limiter should be closest to you facing down. Take a look at the screw holes on the right side piece and make sure that the lard holes for countersinking your screws are facing outward. Now take the last piece and ensure that the labels are facing up and are readable from your position. Now take the eight long screws out of the step one bag labeled M5 asterisk 25 and from the outside end screw your frame together. Each corner will take two screws. Next, take one of the three corner feet and the power box and mount them to the lower portion of the frame with the power box to your left. You will use two of the seven M5 asterisk 14 screws on the right leg and one of them on the right side of the power box. The small M5 asterisk 6 screw will be used on the left side of the power box. This is the only small screw in the pack. Before you screw on the last two feet, you need to slide on your laser support cross rail. The laser mount needs to face towards the front of the frame with the motor facing towards the Atom Stack logo. After that is in place, you can join the remaining two feet to your frame. Find your two rubber tracks and slide them face down under the first set of wheels on the laser cross support. Then feed it up and over the motor gear ensuring the tracks are interlocking with the gear. Then feed it back down under the rear wheel and pull it through. Next, from the step 3 bag, pull out the M5 T-nut and the M5 6 screws. There should be four of each. While pulling the track belt tight, place the T-nut in the slot and with a small flathead screwdriver that's not included with this kit, wedge the T-nut under the rail then screw it in place tight while holding the track belt taunt. You will need to use the Allen wrench provided, the M5-6 screws, and repeat this on all four corners of your frame. When complete, you can use scissors to trim off the excess and place on the three end caps provided in the Step 3 bag. The rest of the installation is just plugging everything else in, and then you're good to go. You can start burning.